We're here on Rock Castle River Wildlife Management Area in Pulaski County. The prior land use on this property was strip mining. And during that, especially during the reclamation stage, oftentimes landowners will use fast growing species to put back on the landscape. In some instances, especially previously, they've used species that are non-native invasive species. So in June of 2023, we started a fairly extensive invasive species removal project. We rented a dozer and actually spent a month uh, dozing out autumn olive, bush honeysuckle, multiflora rose, and basically just piling up these invasive species. To eliminate or reduce the amount of autumn olive specifically on this property, doing one thing alone is not gonna be the answer. We've gotta follow that up with other types of management practices. So prescribed fires, another tool that we're using and then of course this herbicide treatment and we're trying to adapt you know as things evolve and technology is coming along and so we had the money to go ahead and fund this project to get the helicopter out here do the aerial spray we did 330 acres of that and then we followed that up with 65 acres of the drone treatment out here today and it's just a really good way to get a good coverage of herbicide across the area and it's a different technique, something that we haven't done in the past. So we can compare those two practices and just see which one's gonna be the most efficient moving forward. Non-native invasive species are really good at establishing quickly on the landscape. They can reproduce very quickly. They can also spread very rapidly and pretty much cover a landscape and smother out all of the native species. If you don't get every single stitch of root out of that autumn olive, it will re-sprout. So the helicopter coming in, basically what we're doing is we can spray 333 acres fairly quick. We can get a landscape level impact for the habitat and for the local wildlife. So you're talking about a very large impact really quick. Autumn olive is one of the most hardy plants and hard to kill plants out there. And he was able to run that thing with 95 gallons of herbicide in it. And he was treating about 20 to 25 acres at a time. And then he would run that herbicide out, come over, land it on top of the tanker truck, refill it. So we could see it was getting a good coverage of herbicide that's being treated. Herbicide application with a helicopter has allowed us to address multiple acres in the project that we've done this week that would have taken us months on the ground if we were spraying it via tractor or if we were going in and actually cutting those down. So it's much, much more time efficient and then also cost efficient when you look at all the cost that is rolled into there. So helicopter application is definitely something that is going to benefit us at being able to address large acres of this species over time. We're also spraying with a drone, and the drone is actually gonna be uh, used to spray a different type of invasive called Cerisha lespidiza. It's more of an herbaceous weed that grows in these poor soils, and what it does is it basically takes over as well. It outcompetes all your native species and, and has zero benefit for wildlife. The drone is going to treat a smaller area, but for situations like this, we had 65 acres here today, we could have never contracted that chopper to come over and do that because it's not worth their time. So drone comes over, they got a 25 gallon tank on it, you know, much smaller than what the chopper is. It's a slower process, but this guy's flying like 13 feet above the vegetation, same setup, he's got a tablet. We can see the transects he's flying, we keep the herbicide where we want it. And you can see in the video, I mean, he's getting awesome coverage on everything that we're spraying. And so it's another tool in the toolbox for us. If we're treating a smaller area, we can call on the drone to come in and do it. Or if we've got these bigger acreage plots, three, four, 500 acres or more, I think that's at a place, you know, where we'd want to use the chopper. Not only are we addressing that acreage here on Rock Castle River WMA, but we're also looking to expand this and have done that on some of our WMAs in Eastern Kentucky as well. The landscape is extremely similar and unfortunately it's inundated with these non-native invasive species such as autumn olive and cerisa lespidiza. 
Next step is we're actually gonna come in next week once some of these weeds start dying down and we're gonna drill native warm season grasses and forbs. We have a lot of quail in this area and there's not very good nesting cover or escape cover for those quail, which is what you need. So we're gonna come back in, plant some native warm season grasses, which acts as their nesting cover and then some forbs as well, which brings in those insects. It allows for good brooding habitat for young poults and it creates great browse for deer as well. So it's kind of a one-stop shop. Once we get some native cover on the ground, it's actually gonna be a fire tolerant species and it's gonna allow us to run some hot fires through this. The thought process is that we're gonna be able to set back these invasives over time. That way we can provide better habitat for all of our wildlife species.